Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, basketball fans of all ages, welcome into Arthur E. Staff Gymnasium for tonight's matchup, the first of three this week for BCA Sports and the Brockton Lady Boxers. First up on the slate, the Bishop Feehan Shamrocks. As always, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. We have a special guest broadcast partner tonight. It is none other than the starting big man in the paint for the Brockton boys basketball team, Sonny Oak and Lola. Sonny, you guys are off to quite the start, undefeated, number one ranked in the state. Yeah, we're just uh, trying to be humble. Not really trying to get it, get it, get it to us. So, like, number one is really not a big plan. Just trying to get a ring at least. Just go to state and show the town, uh, state that Brockton's back. Simple. Well, travel on Brockton hey, right off out, of the right bat. Right the out. starters for the boxers: Jayla Smith, Nailani Montero, Jade Wint, and Alicia Fernandez, and Elizabeth Williams for. The Shamrocks, Sarah John, Nicole Smith, Riley Lahiff, Anna Shaughnessy, and Ainsley Jolin. Montero coming up with a loose ball, getting it to Wint. Now off to Elizabeth Williams. Her long pass to Fernandez, spinning off the glass, no good. Loose ball sent out to Nailani Montero. Now Jade Wint spinning with it. Her shot a little bit too much topspin on it. And it winds its way out. Feehan comes down with the rebound a minute in, and we are scoreless. Well, you guys were playing in a big game last Friday night, but the game here at Staff Gymnasium, Sunny, 40 fouls between the two teams, 24 at the end of the first half. 40? That was whistle happy referees. Yeah, too, kind of too happy. <laughs> I think 40 is too much. Lady Boxers have had three days off since then, uh, two practices. In a day of rest, so. Did BR win that game? BR won by nine. Right. You guys held on down at BR, three point victory in that one. Yeah, that was a tough one. Uh, the game was kind of their game first, because we started, started slow. One of those slow games like Cambridge started off slow. And then the second unit comes in and just brings everything up, so. It's good that we have a deep bench, so like, if you're not playing good, second piece, the people coming off the bench bring the same energy. Six minutes to go, uh, Feehan with a shot, no good. Brockton comes down with it, still scoreless. Zero to zero, Elizabeth Williams. For some reason, looks like she's not playing 100% tonight. Yeah. Kind of hunching over a lot. Zanalicia Fernandez loses the wild shot. Fan comes away with it and sent out of bounds. And the turnovers are coming fast and heavy here in the first quarter. 5.37 to go, still scoreless. Shamrocks, the top three ranked team in the state coming up with a steal here. This is number 23, sending it out to now 25, Ainsley Jolin working her way inside. She loses it. Out of play, Brockton ball. And the first three minutes of this one, Sonny, can only be summed up by the word sloppy. Sloppy, real sloppy. Elizabeth. Needs to, needs to slow down, Brockton needs to slow down too. The Shamrocks wearing their away green jerseys, gold and white trim, the Brockton boxers in their home whites. Red trim around the black numbers. A jump ball was called. Brockton retaining possession. 17 on the shot clock for the boxers. Jade went out of bounds off of the Shamrocks. And Brockton will try to inbound it again about eight feet back of where they were. And the pass tipped off of Anna Shaughnessy picked up by Fernandez. Fernandez loses it, but Williams in the right place. She takes a deep three off the glass, no good. And Shaughnessy now off to Sarah John. John one-handed inside. Now a three from the corner. This one's good. We have the first score, a three-pointer good for Riley Lahiff. Excuse me, that was Nicole Smith from the corner. 
looked very confident shooting that three. A foul. It's called against, I said number 11. I don't see a number 11 on the floor. It's gonna go against number 10, Sarah John for the Shamrocks. Nailani Montero at the line. That is the first foul of this game. Quite the difference from the bridgewater Raynham game where there were three called in the first minute against the Brockton Boxers. As Sonny, one of the Brockton Boxers starters, you know the importance of keeping fouls under wraps. In the first quarter, Elizabeth Williams was called for three fouls and sat out the remainder of the first half at that point. There was about three minutes remaining in the first quarter when she came out. Talk about foul trouble and how you turn around after a game like that, which you know everything's not your fault, and the refs are calling every little ticky-tack foul. I feel like if you get in foul trouble, it's kind of hard. It takes away your game. So, like, especially, like, when I get in foul trouble, hey, coach takes us out because, like, he knows, like, fourth quarter is when we really need, like, us, so this is how you should do it. If you get foul child early, as soon as you get in, you got to bring it to them. Not like too aggressive so you can get a charge, but bring it to them as like aggressive so he can start calling the other ref can start calling the fouls so that you can maintain it. So that not as the tension is really not on you now, so like not every little thing you do is a foul. So now, yeah, they play even basically now. See, it went three a little bit too long. Montero able to tip the rebound. Now over to Elizabeth Williams. It's eight to one. The Shamrocks on top. Williams working away inside. Too much on it. Bad angle shot. And the Shamrocks take over. This is Sarah John. Over to number 25, Ainsley Jill Lynn. Now Anna Shaughnessy. Her shot too long. All the way down to the X. Now Fernandez with it. Slowly working her way inside now. Out to Elizabeth Williams. Williams three was tipped right to Annalicia Fernandez. Fernandez off the glass, no good. And we're seeing the importance of rebounding early in this one. Need rebounding a lot. Second shots is a key. Good passing by the Shamrocks as Shaughnessy puts it off the glass and in 10 to one. Shamrocks on top. Timeout called by head coach Chris Connolly with 2.26 remaining in the first quarter. Brockton trying to claw their way back from nine down. Sonny, you guys have played from behind a few times this year, including a couple games recently. Brighton and Cambridge come to mind. Yes. Talk about what it's like for the Lady Boxers to be in that situation right now. Uh, being down is not always fun. But you really just got to not give up because if we give up and the score comes up, and you're down the, uh, a big hole that you can't dig yourself out of. So really, just team support and then have everybody else on the same mission. And eventually come, you get up, and then confidence, simple. Let's talk about the run that you guys are on. Undefeated, top ranked in the state. You got a big game coming up on Sunday against the second ranked team in the state, Newton North. What is your mindset going into that one? Really, just to play our game, but like, I feel like nobody has seen our game fully, our full potential game. So just to play like our best game ever, because no one's really nice. They're fundamentals. The centers are like six foot, but they grab boards. So like, it's just fundamental boxing out. So I feel like we just have to match their game too. Box out, shoot right shots, everything. Just to help defense. So yeah. Really? Brockton changing out four of their five on the floor. Jade Wint, the only one remaining. Josilma Montrand, Annalie Lorenzo has her three tipped and the Shamrocks take over. It's two on one up court. And a layup is converted for number 15, Caitlin Repose. 12 to one, the Boxers have yet to convert a field goal 
here in the first quarter, a minute and a half remaining. Jade went with it, working her way down to the corner, thought about the three, almost went up and committed a travel. Now Jayla Smith has it ripped out. And a timeout called by the boxers. Eight seconds on the shot clock for Brockton when the ball is put back in play. A minute 27 left in the quarter. It is 12 to one, Bishop Fian on top of Brockton. So in Brockton we have a couple of people that I like to call dual threats. They're big in the paint, you being one of them. Jade Wint being the other that comes to mind. They can also shoot the three ball. Yeah. When you guys shoot the three, it fires up the team. Talk about what Jade Wint's gonna have to do to spark the Brockton boxers as the only starter remaining on the floor. I feel like she just has to expand her game. So like, if you're down low, hit on, score like six down low real quick, and now they're gonna think they're straight down low player. Then when you bring them outside to the three point, you can shoot. So now they're like hesitant what to do. And then if you could put the, floor, the ball on the floor, now it's a bigger problem because now they don't know what she's doing, so they're clueless. But when your defender's clueless, you can score at will. It's been a dramatic shift in really strategy for the Brockton Boxers as Fernandez makes the first field goal for the Boxers. It's 12 to three with a minute 15 to go in the first quarter. So dramatic shift in strategy. Elizabeth Williams, a center last year, converted to a point guard this year. Last year, you were a pure center. I consider you more of a point guard now that Eldon Terry and Tijon Glendardi have stepped in. Talk about what it's like trying to learn the new position, the new strategies, and really the new role. Uh, really, as a point guard, I really don't call myself a point guard because, I don't know, I really just bring the ball up, but like, I don't know, I see the court differently, so like. Wins three is good. Passes other people can't make. I make them because I'm bigger, stronger. So I just see the floor more. So then those passes are better passes, wide open threes, wide open layups, better for the team. And nobody expects you to take threes. Yeah, nobody. Everyone expects you to drive the lane and, and draw the foul, but when you're shooting from beyond the arc, especially for a big man, you've got one of, one of the better three-point shots that we've seen. Yeah, really, I just practice on it because when I was young, I didn't want to be restricted to just a big man. So I wanted to be versatile, shoot the ball, because everybody's shooting now, so shoot more. Buzzer sounds at the end of the first quarter. It is 17 to eight. Jade Wint responsible for the last five boxers points as she's starting to heat up. The boxers defense is starting to heat up as well, stopping the Shamrocks to just a few points in the last four minutes of the first quarter. Sonny, your thoughts on that first quarter and what the boxers need to do to continue this run? Uh, really just rebound. Uh, Bishop Fien's getting a lot of a lot of rebounds, so if you rebound at a second shot, it'd be better for you. Well, Sarah John and Ainsley Jolin leading the way for the Shamrocks for the Boxers. Fernandez with three and Jade Wint with five as the Boxers start to heat up. Shamrocks with it as Brockton trying to create some defensive pressure. Good ball Short man. two, no good as you mentioned good ball movement for the Shamrocks on that last possession. Now it is Annalie Lorenzo to Jade Wint. Wint corner three, no good off the front of the rim. Fernandez grabbing the board off the glass, no good, took a bad bounce. Tannis out to Fernandez, deep three is good. Call those game changing threes. Puts the boxers within a couple of possessions, 17 to 11, and Annalisa Fernandez in alone off the glass and in. We've seen that play from the boys' team a little bit as Tannis is going to be called for a block. 
come up with a steal. You're in alone. More often this year, we've seen a one-handed dunk attempt that uh, has not been converted. But you've got the people that are good with fundamentals that go for the layups and convert them. Ah, uh, yeah, really. One-handed slams are exciting. We'll give you that. Sometimes you need the two points instead of risking it. So yeah, I'd rather have the two points than have Coach yell at me for missing the dunk. Lorenzo, quick release three, no good. Went touching the ball out of play. Shamrocks take over. 6.41 to go in the second. It's a four point ball game, 17 to 13. Shamrocks with it. This is Caitlin Repose down low. Out to Nicole Smith. And Went getting in the passing lane, but knocking it out of play. Montron, Tannis, and Lorenzo all coming out of the game. Nelani Montero, Jayla Smith, and Layla DePina in for the boxers. Hey, uh, hey, hey, four cross, four cross, Nicole. 15 seconds on the shot clock for the Shamrocks. This is Repose, three, good for number 23, Anna Shaughnessy. Out of play off of Bishop Thien. So you guys are a team of many talents. You've got big guys, Eldon Terry, Tejan Glenn Darty. Then you've got a handful of guys that are 6'3 that are good all over the floor. And then you got, I call them the little guys. I'm 5'6". I'm so you got the six-footer Marcus Azor, who has stu absolutely stunned us with a couple of one-handed dunks this year. Yeah, Marcus, Marcus has really uh, improved his jumping ability over the summer. So I think that's what everybody wants to do, dunk now in games. More flashy, bring more attention. And then you've got the first Brock in boxer this year that has earned a nickname. Assassin. At 5'10", Jerice the Assassin Harris. Hey, the quickest release possibly in Brockton Boxer's history, knocking him down from beyond the arc. All the way down to the X. I just call Jerice different, because Jerice really helped us a lot of games. Like Cardinal Spellman, he just, when he shoots and he's on fire, Unstoppable, like, should call him an assassin. Just everything he does, everything he throws up is going in. Yeah. So you mentioned the Spellman game, the championship game of the Oliver Ames Holiday Tournament. We were fortunate enough to be there for BCA Sports. That was some kind of atmosphere in that gym. Yeah, I think we can call that a battle of Brockton. The first ever matchup between those two teams. Yeah. So like really we just we played each other in like summer leagues, like boys and girls club, but like that was last year's team. We really didn't have like chemistry as we have now, so like we really if, if we wanted to play them badly, to like more than anything. In our eyes that was like first step to a state championship. So like we take it step by step. And then beating them is like really big for us. Bragging rights for the city. Well we felt like we owned the city, but like they thought that they owned it too, so Kind of finished it. I said we own it back again. Yeah, it's a big, big game for us. And there was ranked two. I think there was ranked four back then or six. I think so. But yeah, it was a big game for us. They do own the current bragging rights with the latest basketball state title. In 2013, they won it. They got Hopefully that changes yeah, that's good. this year. I can't say much about that, but we working. That's all I gotta say. We're working for that, for that goal to come home, come to the city. Banners, we're coming for that. Went two or two at the line, 23-50 in the score. Brockton down by eight. Brockton High has already seen one state championship this year. The men's soccer team. Is this one out of play off of Feehan? Are you guys drawing any motivation from that, saying, well, if they can do it, 
we can do it too. We want to make this school proud. We want to make a, a deep tournament run. Yeah, we, we ask them every day, how do you guys do it? They just say you got to be humble, forget about rankings. Rankings don't mean anything. And then if you guys lose, you uh, just take from your differences how you guys lost. And just as a team, everything's at the team. That's why I like the soccer, the soccer team because like many of them are Cape Verdean. So like that brings them closer. So like that's what we got to do. Even like not all of us are the same like culture and stuff. So just bring each other closer. Family, like I feel like if you're more of a family, you put stuff on the line for each other. So like you'll die for the ball for your teammate. You'll take a charge for your teammate. So yeah, do a lot for your teammate. You said a line in there that has been talked about a number of times. Rankings don't matter. Yeah. Now that, with the soccer team, is especially present because they were not ranked all season. Yeah. In the Globe's top 25, undefeated up until the last game of the season, demolishing opponents, the Catholic schools, the private schools, they just demolished everybody. Wow, there was like sh in unranked. They said yeah. their schedule was unranked. too weak and they can't hang with the really big guns from the, from the North Shore, like St. John's, who they beat 2-1 in the tournament. Yeah, I feel like them guys were just had a one mission. From the beginning of the practice or whatever summer practice they had, one mission is to win the state championship. So, I feel like they brought it for us. I we we owe them something too. Jade went on fire right now. She just converted another layup on the other side of the floor, 24 to 17. As Brockton called for a foul number 14 at the line, Riley Lahef. 4.08 to go in the second quarter. Lahef no good on her first attempt. Boys team, some kind of special this year. You guys, the bench is as good as the starting five. And to this point, I think we've only seen the same starting five two or three times. Yeah. Uh, coach really likes to change it up a lot. Not too much, but like, whether he's happy with it, like, I feel like the starting five right now is good. Any starting five is good in my eyes because we all can. Everybody on the team could come off the bench and produce the same. So as long as, long as you do your you do your job, I feel like you're fine. So that's what we have. We have each one of us has a job to do, and we try to complete that job. We've got a discussion over whose possession it should be. A jump ball was called. They awarded the ball to Feehan. The refs are going to bring it in for who should have the ball. Everybody move back towards the boxer's end. The conversation con continues. We are exactly halfway through the second quarter. It's 25 to 17. The Shamrocks up by eight over the Brockton Boxers who started off very slowly at one point we're down by 12 points so we asked Jerice this question uh, back before the Brighton game we had him on during one of the girls games you guys got blown out by a couple of teams right here in Staff Gymnasium last year BC High one of them Brighton one of them Brighton came in here embarrassed you guys by 50 uh, 99 to 49 the final score in that one do you have any dates, even looking back, yeah. that before the season you had circled on your calendar, like, hey, we really want to beat that one team? Uh, really, every loss. Every loss that we ever had last year. Just coming back, revenge. We call it the revenge tour, so we're just coming back. Especially Brighton. Brighton really disrespected us in the house, so we felt like we owe them a real one. So Brighton was one, BC. You just, like, I feel like every team BC that came in here twice last twice, year. Yes, the Christmas uh, tournament and then the regular season game. So, yeah, we feel like everybody that we ever lost to, we owe them a lot. Uh, 
feel them punishment back. So whoever's next on the list, I'm just saying, you come in the fight. Revenge Tour is becoming the thing yeah. in New England sports. Tom Brady started it with his Deflate Gate Revenge Tour. So I guess what you gotta do. Prove everybody wrong. I don't know. Everybody was saying last year, we're probably gonna be all right. But then, I don't think, I don't know, nobody expected us to be undefeated. I really didn't expect us to be undefeated. But then when it starts going on, everybody's playing in their role. There's nothing you can say after that. And I feel like we're so good that there's some, some games you don't play to our full potential. There's that one or two guy, guys that like just help us, they support us real, like a boo. Many games, a boo. I forget which ones. Like I, I wasn't playing good. And then you got a boo coming in. Boo, the Spellman game, 23 points, yeah, 16 Spelman. rebounds. Did really good that game. I couldn't, I couldn't contribute to my team, so he just came and really helped us a lot that game. Marcus, Jerese, everybody. He went to Jayla Smith, or to Fernandez, slowly working her way inside. Now it was went for three, no good. Loose ball, Fernandez comes up with it to Rebecca Tannis off the glass and in. The pass. 2.45 to go. And the Shamrocks are in a one and one bonus situation. That was a travel that was not called. Down low, it's number 23 in a Shaughnessy. Off the glass and in 27 19, an eight point lead. Jade Wint, no good. The Shamrocks take over. Get it out! Wide open three for number 12 is good. That's Nicole Smith. Timeout called by Brockton, 2.08 to go in the second quarter. It's 30 to 19, an 11 point edge for the Shamrocks. So big week here at Staff Gymnasium for the Lady Boxers. Tell us how you would prepare for this kind of schedule. You got back to backs first off, Bishop Feehan tonight, Notre Dame Academy tomorrow night, and then you got a big three divisional matchup here on Friday night against the Durfee Hilltoppers. How do you go into that week of preparation, trying to get ready for each individual opponent, including a back-to-back? Back-to-backs -back? Uh, back are tough, because you can go off a loss and go have to play. So I feel like you should play your game. Whatever you have to do, keep doing it. Don't, don't change your job. That's like I said, don't change what your job is. Keep doing your job. It should be good. Every game should be the same for you. Uh, yeah, if you're not producing, Cheer your teammates up so they, they can produce, and maybe that will help you produce your game too. 30 to 19, boxers trying to claw their way back in from 11 down now. Annalie Lorenzo, the sharpshooter from three point land into the game for the boxers. Fernandez out to Lorenzo, thought about the three, gives it to Jade Went. She pump fakes, now gives it to Fernandez. Fernandez down low to Wint. Wint back to Fernandez. Five on the shot clock. Brockton's gonna get rid of it. Across to Lorenzo. Deep three looks good and it is from way downtown is Annalie Lorenzo. Very good shooter. Yeah. We like to compare her to Juris. <laughs> they both have that very, very quick release. Can shoot it from Anywhere. almost anywhere within yeah. half court. I'm not scared to pull it either. Jocelyn Montrond into the game, replacing Rebecca Tannis. Hey, 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 Sarah, go ahead. On. 88 seconds left in the second quarter, 30 to 22. Now the Shamrocks, some one-handed quick passing. And the double team is Caitlin Repose picks up the ball, a three way off the mark for Sarah John. Brockton comes up with the ball. Jade went to Lorenzo. Lorenzo, three, bang. That's fine. And when her and Cherise start to heat up, you That's almost gotta stick them in double coverage. Yeah, you have to. That's like the game, that's, not, that's why I think 
Like when your shooters are shooting well, now your down low game can be good too, because now pass it down low. Lorenzo three oh, yeah. off the mark. And she hit the ground. Brockton calling for a foul. The referee is chuckling about something. Let the Shamrocks take over. And that, in part, is one of the big reasons that the boxers men's team has been so successful early on. When you get a double team someone from three-point land, it opens up the big guys in the paint. Lorenzo three, this one off the mark again. That's our game, we just we like to get our shooters hot first. Or we just like to get anybody hot first, down low shooter. And then once that, uh, once that, once that happens, it opens up many other things. So this one will be easy for us. Seven seconds on the clock, Brockton coming up with it, five seconds. Jade Wint. A jump ball forced. And the Shamrocks are going to take over with 0.4 seconds left. I mean, you get a long pass across the court to half court line, throw up a prayer, long pass, unable to get a shot off. As the foul was not called, the first half has come to an end 30 to 25. Your score, Feehan on top, but Brockton charging. Sonny, your thoughts on the first half and what Brockton has to do to keep it up uh, and get what would be their first lead of the game? Really? Just right now they're doing good, so just cut down on some shots, like smarter shots, go to the basket a lot, because I feel like Jade and Annalicia, they really attack the rim, so when they, once they do that, it should be fine, attack the rim, and rebound. Rebound's a big thing. And play defense, because Finn can shoot well, so just cover them and it should be good. Shaughnessy, the leader for the Shamrocks, she's got 15 points for the boxers. It is Jade Wint with seven. It's 30 to 25. Bishop Fee and Shamrocks on top of the Brockton boxers at halftime. We're gonna step aside, take a short break, and bring you second half action right after this. It's not always easy being a dad. Do you have panda asthma too? Does that run in the family? This is the home of the most priceless kung fu artifacts. But when you make an effort. Dad, we're not supposed to touch anything. Oh, sorry. Go along, son. It's always worth it. Whoa, master. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's <laughs> life. Take time to be a dad today. I am gonna get you, I'm gonna get you. Call 877-4DAD411 or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Class, today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. Plus. That's a major key. Another one. Another. Mogul talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused, fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise, Louise, can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at getschool.com. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, basketball fans of all ages, welcome back into Staff Gymnasium for second half action between the Bishop Feehan Shamrocks and your Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Join alongside my special broadcast partner for tonight's festivities, Sonny Oak and Lola. It's 30 to 25. Brockton 
has slowly but surely worked their way back into this one. Feehan up by five to start this second half. Your leaders for the Shamrocks, Anna Shaughnessy with 15 points. For the boxers, Jade Wint leading the charge with nine. And Alicia Fernandez right behind her with seven. Jade Wint for three is short. And Feehan grabs the rebound. Some of the quick points we covered in the first half. There are multiple similarities between the Lady Boxers team and the undefeated men's team for Brockton High. Sonny Okinola would put his money on Mrs. Harris, Jerisa's mom, in the three-point contest. Of course. Just tell him all he knows. And Alicia yeah. Fernandez coming up with the steal, but unable to hold on. Fian grabs it right back. Oh, and now Williams comes up with a steal. It could just be me, but something's up with Williams. Yeah, I think so too. She looks fatigued. And she's, she's holding her, her stomach. Yeah, in her stomach. Watch her left arm. There's not too much, too much motion there. And she's heavily favoring one side. She she's trying to herself. swat that away, unsuccessful. 34 to 25, Brockton down by nine. Don't let her have it. Oh yeah, I think she, it's a, it might be her left hand. Fernandez three mm. off the glass and in. This number 14, spin around two is good for the Shamrocks, Riley Lahef. We'll have to do some research, figure out what's wrong with Elizabeth Williams, the starting point guard for the boxers. Went spinning with it, floater no good. Gets her own rebound. The ref's saying that it's all ball, and now they're going to call a foul against Feehan. It's going to be against number 14, Riley Leigh. Jackie, how many? Hey, that had to be three seconds or something. Our second personal foul. Went to Williams. Now Nelani Montero is fouled. The reach called against number 25, Ainsley Jolin. And two and a half minutes into the third quarter, Fian's got two fouls against them. Help! Help! Jade Wint gets run into, and this one's going to go out of play off of the Shamrocks. Brockton will inbound it with 24 seconds to go on the shot clock from all the way on the other side of the court. You can see it, especially on the inbounds attempt. She was gonna throw that one in one-handed. Yeah. Fernandez off the glass and in. Drawing the boxers back within two possessions, 36 to 30 with 5.15 to go. Oh, still. And Williams comes up with a loose ball. She didn't even want to put it in that left. I think something's wrong. Went three, oh. game. Jade Wint bringing the boxers within three points, 36 to 33, five minutes to go in the third quarter. I think it might be the number, 35 is a special number. Spin around two off the front of the rim, no good. Williams grabbing the rebound, has it ripped out of her hand and the jump ball called. It will remain a fee hand. Fee hand short jumper, good for Riley Lahiff. Point number five for the Shamrock Center. Help Sarah, Sarah. Went inside for Fernandez. Fernandez pass intended for Williams, intercepted by Sarah John. Push called against Annalisa Fernandez. John in for Smith. 
Smith to Lahiff, back to Smith. Now inside, Finn not moving too much without the ball, but getting open was Nicole Smith. And she lays it up and in. 40 to 33, the Shamrocks back up by seven. Went a little floater, no good. Milani Montero called for the push. Halfway through the third quarter, 40 to 33 the score. The Shamrock's up by seven. It's one of our favorite talk. Favorite topic, excuse me, to talk about, Sonny, is the multi-sport athletes. You are a tight end on the gridiron, mm -hmm. and a, we'll just call you a forward because yeah. I think you're half point guard, half center for the basketball team. How do the two sports help each other? And if I'm not to track, uh, yeah, but this year I might not do it because. Uh, I need supplies for my family, so I might not. But yeah, football and basketball, uh, I play defense a lot. But I play uh, defensive end, too, so I feel like it helps you, like, explosion. Especially when you at DN, explosion, tight end explosion. It helps you with your hands. But yeah, football really helps with basketball, and uh, basketball helps with football. Because football, I mean, basketball, you need footwork, your hands. Awareness, so yeah, it helps a lot. Three minutes to go in the third quarter. Jade Wint with it. Download of Fernandez off the glass and in. Fourteen points for Annalisa Fernandez, who gets bowled over and run over in the paint, no call. So 14 points for Fernandez, 12 for Jade Went. The two top scores for the boxers, 17 points for Anna Shaughnessy for the Shamrocks. As the boxers down by five with the ball. Spoke too soon, Caitlin Repose comes up with a steal. Has her shot blocked by Fernandez. Be called for a block. Boxers coming in at five and seven. Of course, that nine point loss to the Bridgewater Random Trojans. Boxers last game, a wild one. 40 fouls, 4-0 in that game between the two teams. 26 of them on the Boxers. But the most shocking stat of the night, not one person fouled out. <laughs> that means everybody had to have at least two or three. I feel like so finishing the game, you, you had Fernandez and Williams both with four. four. Uh, Wint, I believe, had three. We've got it written down somewhere. It was yeah. wild. Cook probably had to play the bench. And that's happened. It got so bad that at halftime, I approached the officials and I said, listen, if you guys are calling all these fouls and you're going to be consistent about it, yeah. we're going to have a ton of people foul out. What happens when there's less on no. side? And they said, the rules state you can play as long as it's a fair game. You can have a one-on-one -on -one game. Really? I thought we were at least going to see a five-on-four or four-on-four. But they said, as long as it's a competitive game, you could have a one-on-one -on -one matchup. And the clock still runs? The clock still runs. Wow. Outlet. That would be different. You go 10 minutes to straight one on one. It'd be boring to watch. We're all very glad it did not get to that point. No. 
be here all night. Minute and a half to go in the third quarter, 42 to 35. Jade went with it, spinning. She is clearly fouled, no call, but Feehan sending it out of bounds. Or are they gonna say it stayed in? Williams coming over with it, tipping it to Annalie Lorenzo, now up for Jade Wint. Jamari Johnson catching up with it, and she is fouled. A reach called against Olivia Bisso. Or rather, it's going to be Ainsley John. Annalie Lorenzo, two three-pointers to her name tonight. Went thought about the quick three. Now takes a long two off the front of the rim, no good. Loose ball ping-ponging around, picked up by John. Now a three off the front of the rim, no good. And the Shamrocks retain possession. Uncontested layup down low for Ainsley John. Now Williams on the other side. No good, the Shamrocks come up with it. John is followed from behind by Jade Wint. John at the line for two shots. <laughs> Layla DePina in for Jade Wint, and Alicia Fernandez in for Jamari Johnson. Horn. Play continues. Shamrocks with a quick two is good for Riley Lahef. Shot clock off, 25 seconds to go. Brockton down by 11. Annalie Lorenzo thought about the three. That gives it to Josoma Montron. To Fernandez. She takes the three and it's good. Eight point ball game now. Brockton has had their fair share of swings in this one. They've been as close as one and as many as 12 behind the Bishop Feehan Shamrocks. Right now they're somewhere in the middle, a deficit of eight for the boxers. Williams whiffed on the pass and now committing a foul, 1.6 on the clock. A reach called and again, Ainsley Jolin will be at the line for a couple of shots. 1.6 on the clock in the third quarter. <laughs> Buzzer sounds the shot will not count. 47 to 38 your score. It's a nine point edge for the Bishop Fee and Shamrocks. And Sonny, you guys have had swings in games. The boxers tonight have had multiple swings in which they've been down as many as 12, as close as one. Talk about what the boxers have to do to stem the tide of those swings and really get their way back into this one. Uh, right now they kind of look dead to me, so. Kind of dead right now, so we should pick it up and uh, play boxer ball. Simple. So Anna Shaughnessy, 17 points for the Shamrocks. Jade went and Alicia Fernandez leading the charge for the boxers. They are within two points of each other, I believe, 17 and 15 for those two. 
So end of the third quarter, as always, is tradition. We want to thank the cast and crew for bringing you the sights and sounds of tonight's game. At the helm, our fearless leader tonight, head of the ship, award-winning director and producer Paul Mandeville. Next to him, graphics, audio, replay. Katya Andrade up top. We've got the prolific cinematographer Aaron Tebow. Danny Steele, Rob Curry, head statistician for tonight, Mike the Postman Simmons, yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. And you are listening to the sultry sounds of myself, the Mad Dog Matt, and our special guest broadcast partner, Sonny Oak and Lola, tight end, defensive end, point guard, center, Brockton High All School athlete. Shamrock's come in with a nine point lead. First time out, we're gonna get official Super Bowl predictions. Stay tuned for that. Fernandez, wide open, stops, pops, two, no good. Transition, go, we got numbers. We got numbers, Sarah. <laughs> Fernandez coming up with it, she is fouled, no, no call. And a block on the other end by Riley Lahiff. Jade went to Elizabeth Williams. Looks like it could be Williams' shoulder. Jayla Smith thought about the three. Now Nelani Montero takes it from the corner. No good. Smith charges up, grabs the rebound, brings it back to three-point Lynn. Now to Jade Went. Fernandez calling for it. She gets it. Top of the key, working her way inside. It's fouled. It's going to go against Anna Shaughnessy. Second foul against Shaughnessy, 6.47 to go in the fourth. The sixth team foul against the Shamrocks. Jade went to Fernandez. Went setting the pick, Fernandez driving baseline, loses it to Lahiff. Now Riley Lahiff charging inside. She attempted to pass it to somebody. Who it was, nobody knows, but the ball found its way into the men's restroom. Some interesting conversations, always the case on the visitor's bench. Head coach Michael Didi saying, we're up by 11 for Christ's sake. Why is she acting like it's a one point ball game and she's trying to put the team on her back? Went spinning with it, no good. There's been some interesting coaches on the visitor's side. And Alicia Fernandez has four fouls. So that's a situation to watch. One more and the boxers leading scorer and rebounder is done for the night. Williams to Fernandez. Now to Smith. Long two, no good. Fernandez in the right place at the right time off the glass and in. And Fernandez, her fifth personal. So Annalicia Fernandez has fouled out of this game. She's replaced by Rebecca Tannis. That is a big loss for the Lady Boxers.
Fernandez finishes with 19 of the botchers, 40 points, just about half. Boxers down by 10, it's 50 to 40. Shamrocks are up. Just over five minutes to go in this fourth quarter. Tennis to Smith, Smith to Wint. Now to Nelani Montero. Swung around to Elizabeth Williams and she loses it. Still in play. That ball did not hit the floor on that Shamrock's possession. At least six passes before that ball was shot. And the layup was good. Thirteen points for Riley Lahiff. Counted in one, the foul called against Elizabeth Williams and Shaughnessy at the line. So Shaughnessy at the line for a couple of shots. Tavares into the game for the boxers. She gets the ball down low, loses it. This one up to Shaughnessy, Shaughnessy. And fouled by Nailani Montero was Nicole Smith. And a timeout called by head coach Michael Deedy. 3.47 to go in the fourth quarter. As promised, Pats, Eagles, a rematch of the 0405 season Super Bowl. Sonny, you're obviously a big sports fan. Of course. Being both on the football team and basketball team. Who do you got? Give me a final score and why. Uh, it's tough, it's tough, it's tough. But hopefully the Patriots win. If they win, it's either by game winning touchdown or four points. That's how I'm going to say it. It's either going to be, if it's a close game, it's either going to be 20 to 24. If not, the Eagles, Philadelphia's looking nice, so I don't know. It's going to be a good game. It's one of those games that you got to judge after halftime, third quarter. It's one of those games because the Patriots love to come back out of nowhere. So, yeah. All right, Pats by 10. I'm going high scoring on this one. I'm going to say 33 to 23. Gronk has the second touchdown of the day. I'm going with you. I'm going with you. I believe in that. Is an interesting situation. Bleeding at the knee is Nicole Smith. So by rule, she's going to come off the floor. Fian's going to call a timeout because you can't have a player on the floor that's bleeding. At the line, shooting two is Nicole Smith who is cut beneath her left knee. 
gonna have to look back and see what the heck happened on, on that one. She shot the first free throw. Either way, 347 left in the fourth quarter. 54 to 14, a 14 point edge for the Shamrocks. Also, bold prediction, post-game press conferences, McDaniels and Patricia both announced they're leaving the Patriots. Really? McDaniels to the Indianapolis Colts and Patricia to the Detroit Lions. That's, I think that's about as close to a rebuild as the Patriots are gonna have yeah. in the Belichick-Brady era. You replace a couple of the coaching staff. Also, bold prediction, Nick Casario named the offensive coordinator. Current director of player personnel, Jade Went three is good. She's on fire tonight. 12 point game, Brockton hitting the big shots, but still down by double digits. Three on the shot clock, this one hitting the rim, resetting the shot clock. It was no good, brought down by Tavares. Montron, deep three is good. Boxers back within nine. Three minutes to go in the fourth quarter, and the Boxers outside shooting is heating up. Rockton has no fouls to give. Nine already against the team as this one rolls out of bounds off of the foot of Tavares. Brockton with nine fouls against them. The next one puts the Shamrocks in a double bonus situation. Feehan quite content to run out a lot of the clock as number 12, Nicole Smith, loses it out of bounds. Brockton's coach is calling that, that ball out of play off of Feehan. He's not gonna get that call. Spin around hook is good for Shaughnessy. 2.15 to go in the fourth quarter. Brockton back down by 11. Lorenzo. 23 points for Shaughnessy. He's having a night to remember. Montron's going to grab this one off a deflection, and now it's stolen away by Nicole Smith all the way in, laid it up in. One as Montron fouled her from behind. If you're gonna foul on a breakaway, make it blatant. Yeah, you yeah. gotta make sure that ball does no not go in. in. Williams in for Tannis. And Sam Pearlstein is gonna come in for Shaughnessy. Ainsley Jolin going to come in in a moment. For Nicole Smith. <laughs> Williams to Wint. Wint now takes the three, is good. That's gonna be a long two. Boxers within 11, 90 seconds to go. The refs thought about calling a travel there. Up not to, down low to Pearlstein up and in. Her first points of the night. Williams to Wentz. And another turnover for the Brockton Boxers. Now that's how you follow someone from behind. You make sure that ball does not go in the basket. So you're taking the Pats either by seven or four. Yeah. I feel like it's gonna be one of those games when Belichick has to 
throwing some play, some play, and then Tom Brady just does him. Super Bowl media press conferences are fun. Fun. Fun, especially with Coach Bill Belichick. Someone told him a joke, first question of the press conference, to lighten the mood. Yeah. See if you can get this one. Why did the football coach go to the bank? Football coach go to the bank. Ah, it's cash is checkout, I guess. To get his quarterback. Oh, that's but the old one. That's the old one. I forgot about that one. Belichick thought it was hysterical. He actually laughed. Oh, my. Belichick laughing, that's a rare sight right there. Rare sight. I think it was more because it's a stupid joke, not yeah. a funny joke. Kudos to the reporter who actually, <laughs> he might have been five years old. So now your thoughts on the Celtics who have been on a little bit of a cooled streak. Yeah. Still over the Cavs who have been absolutely terrible. terrible. One question, do you think Gordon Hayward plays this season? Should save him the next year. Let him get healthy. Don't rush it because it's really not going to rush me. Just We're doing fine right now. If if they get in, probably in their playoffs, if he's like 100%. But if not, don't risk it. All right, what's, what's wrong with the best team of NBA history? The Cleveland Cavaliers in the quote-unquote best player who needs a team of 16 All-Stars in order to be able to have a good game. LeBron really doesn't need people in mind. I feel like LeBron went there. He didn't really have much, so he really can't yeah, He only it. had a couple of number one picks. Yeah. <laughs> but still, like, some of them were, like, they weren't so good. They're, like, one year and then um, I feel like Le LeBron, when he was on Miami, he had D-Wade, he had Bosch. But, like, LeBron really can, like, be different on a different – like, you put a, you could put him on, I say, like, the Nuggets, be different. LeBron really doesn't need that much help. Mines. We are now head coach Chris Connolly. Coach, tough one hit the final score. Annalisa fouled out midway through the fourth quarter. Yeah, I mean we had um, we had somebody at the table already to check in. Uh, just gonna get it there in time and few seconds later she's she's out with a with a fifth foul and uh, you know it's tough because we rely on her to bring the ball up, we rely on her for her rebound and her steals. I mean she a lot of the points we get are off of turnovers that she causes on the defensive end and without that we were kinda missing it at the end. But um, we battled. You know we battled that was we Good fought bad. tooth and nail against the number two seed in the state and um, we almost had him. We did a better job rebounding, meeting some passes. You know, a couple of things fall. I think I think we could beat them. So that's the second loss of the big three. Elizabeth Williams, you could tell, wasn't 100 percent tonight. Tell us about her. She got new shoes, and uh, today was the first day she wore them, and they caused all kinds of problems on the bottom of her feet. And uh, yeah, that was that was that. So this is the first of three games tonight, a back-to-back. -back. You're back here again at Staff Gymnasium tomorrow night against Notre Dame Academy. How do you forget this one and get ready for the Cougars? I mean, I, I think that we played really hard. We never gave up against this team. Um, you know, we, 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 we had it down, low numbers, and I, I think if we had everyone in there and we were, did some, small, some of the smaller things, we can beat them. And uh, if that's the second-best team in the state, we belong up there. Coach, we'll see you back here tomorrow night. Notre Dame Cougars against the Brooklyn Boxers. 7 o'clock tip-off in that one. You had Sonny do? Sonny was out. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> He's taking the pass. It's depending on what kind of game it is. Okay. Good.
63 to 50, your final score. The boxers falling to the number two ranked team in the state, the Bishop Fee and Shamrocks. Sonny, your final thoughts on the game? Uh, it was a good game. I feel like Brockton trying to hold their own, but uh, Fian, they have more experience, so Fian is they just played their, their game, passed the ball very well tonight, and they can shoot, so like they just played the game well. Game ball, Anna Shaughnessy, 23 points. Annalisa Fernandez, 19 points. That wraps it up from Staff Gymnasium, 63 to 50. Your final score of the boxers falling to the Shamrocks. They're right back at it tomorrow night against the Notre Dame Cougars. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access, my broadcast partner, Sonny Oak and Lola, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.